I've always been a big fan of FIFA, even after they took out the ability to fly kick the goalkeeper in the nuts from World Cup 98. I used to like watching the Premier League as well, until Manchester City, which was my team, stopped being underdogs and started throwing enough money to buy the sun. Now, that hasn't dulled my enthusiasm for virtual football, and as they do every year, EA Canada have kindly delivered FIFA 14 in time for people to enjoy it, you know, before we all run off and play Battlefield. But, while people are happy to proclaim, again, like every other year, that this year's FIFA is the best ever, I have some serious concerns about the franchise. Before we get into that though, let's talk about what's new and good. FIFA Ultimate Team, which I'm told is the biggest thing in the franchise these days, has got a whole heap of updates. Most of the pay-to-win feel around it is gone, and the single-player matches, which were removed last year, are back. But the biggest, one of the biggest changes is the introduction of chemistry styles, which is a modifiable trait that gives stat bonuses to your players, depending on what kind of play you want them to have. Now, on the pitch itself, the most important changes are the more realistic pure shot system, protect the ball, where players use their bodilies to more cleverly guard possession, and precision movement, which changes everything. Pure Shot adds a little bit of unpredictability to each shot, so it gives shots a possibility to rise, dip and bend. It makes goals, especially with the top level strikers, much more satisfying. Guarding the ball is kind of different. If you hold down the left trigger now, it uses the player's body to shield the ball, but it all comes down to how strong your player is. Collisions in body strength are more important in FIFA 14, and even someone like Lionel Messi can't keep the ball away forever. The biggest change on the pitch, though, is the precision movement, which changes how every player accelerates, stops, turns, runs, jumps, and balances themselves. It makes for a more realistic game of football, because players build up to their faster speed rather than just launching at full pelt. Sometimes you need an extra touch or two to balance yourself before taking a shot, and players just can't turn on a dime and backpedal to pick up a pass that, you know, put behind them. Now, that's fine in theory. What you end up getting is a slower, more conservative, and more patient brand of football. Now, that in and of itself is fine, but it's not a slower and safer game because players have to be more intelligent with their stamina, or because the defensive AI is some pinnacle of computer engineering. You have to be as careful with your balance now as your positioning. Players will shift their weight every time you try and cut the ball back away from a defender, so if you overdo it just a touch, you could result in your player getting stuck on the spot, or the ball could bobble out to a defender. Now, again, In principle, that's fine, but when you add the elements of randomness that the developers have been putting into the game over the last couple of years to make it more like real football, it gets annoying. And if you're someone like me who happens to enjoy FIFA for taking a team from the lower leagues all the way to the top to European competition, then it gets bloody frustrating. For example, play a match between two League 2 sides. It's a total clusterfuck. None of the players have the pace to blitz through the wings, so you have to constantly prod and poke, switch the play from side to side, and keep grinding it out until you can find a bit of space on the diagonal. Now, the attacking AI has been updated again this year, but too many times you'll lay off a pass only for your teammate to just launch beyond the back four. And even when they're not venturing offside, they often go so far forward that they're in an area that effectively takes them out of the passage of play. Now, everyone's better defensively now, so if you screw up that one passage of play, you won't get the ball back for another minute or two. It's more like a proper game of football, but when you're playing at the lower leagues, like I like to do, it's not always more fun. Now, if you're the kind of person that just fires up a season as Barcelona or Arsenal or Manchester United, or you just jump into the multiplayer or you just do the ultimate team, then these kind of changes won't bother you. They'll make it a better game, And therefore, the top end of FIFA, people that like playing with the Messis and the Ronaldos. That's okay. And the rest of the changes to the game are fine too. Like, the textures and the models, they could use an update. They're not fantastic. But the quality of the animations and the broadcast-style presentation do a great job covering up all of those little flaws. And outside of the actual gameplay... The menus look fantastic now. They're like an Appleized version of Windows 8. You have tiles all through the menus, all through the Ultimate Team. It looks really good. But the biggest changes are what happens on the pitch. And if you're someone that plays on that top level, you might find a slower, a more realistic, but a more fun version of FIFA. But if you're someone like me, someone who likes playing a lower leagues, grinding it out with no-name players, you might not be as chuffed. This is Alex Walker for Games on Net.